not a rhetorical question. I would like you to think back to last week and when we introduced vector equations of lines. Not a rhetorical question. Why did we introduce vector equations? We've been dealing with lines for years. We've got equations of lines. Why vector equations? Any takers? Does anyone recall? Hmm. Jia, you want to start us off? So you have one variable lambda instead of three x, y, z. Okay, so that's a big idea here. Let's just jot that down. We introduced this lambda. It had a special name, by the way, which um, Jia didn't mention. It starts with a P. Does anyone remember what it's called? It's called a parameter, right? So we introduce this lambda, this parameter, and we introduce it in place of um, three different variables. A single variable, right? Rather than an x and a y and a z. And that kind of is, was the main reason. Do you remember? We were trying to represent lines in three dimensions. And we were like, ah, awkward to come up with equations, just like normal Cartesian equations for these lines. Not impossible, just we ended up with planes when we tried to extend what we do in 2D uh, into 3D, right? Now, uh, we're going to keep on going with vector equations because it turns out they're not just handy to represent three-dimensional stuff. They're very, very useful for representing things that you just cannot come up with a Cartesian equation for. However, to get better at working with vector equations, we're going to go into, if you have a look at this question here, for example, we're going to go into using vector equations but in 2D, just so we can wrap our head around them. 3D is really hard when you just start to add a little bit of complexity. So when you have a look at this question, as we're going to do right now, think about this. You may like to jot for yourself, as I'm reading, a bit of a diagram for yourself. So how does it begin? You get some line v, it gets a vector equation, 2 comma, sorry not 2 comma 1, 2 1, what kind of vector is that for this particular line? It's a particular kind of vector. It's the position vector, because it, it gets us onto the line. And then you've got this lambda, as Jao mentioned, 1, 2. And that's a different vector. What vector does that represent? Direction. It's the direction vector. Very good. So if you're starting to assemble for yourself a diagram, right? that 2, 1, 2, horizontal, 1, vertical, that tells you that gets onto the line, position vector. And then the 1, 2, 1, horizontal, 2, vertical, that tells you the direction, which way you're facing. Do you have a sense for the gradient of the line now? It's simply going to be uh, rise over run. It's upside down because we go x and then y. Gradient 2. OK, so we've got a straight line. Great. It intersects the circle with center. And then they provide you, this is a bit funny, right? They provide you a vector that tells you where the center is. Vector which we sort of normally associate with, oh, it's this line bit. But really, it's the point at the end. It's the head, as it were, of the vector that tells us where the center of the circle is. Radius 3. And then apparently, this line and this circle intersect twice, P and Q. The midpoint of that chord PQ is M. Find the coordinates of M. There's the question. Okay? Now, let me give you a brief moment. There's so much, and I already mentioned draw a diagram, right? There's so much visually going on here that you really cannot successfully enter this question without having a decent diagram up your sleeve. That takes some time and thought. That is its own part of the question, even though it's not, I don't say, draw a diagram, right? So let me give you a minute now. I can see like bits of diagrams beginning. You absolutely, absolutely need to use a ruler. Um, the bigger this is, the better it's going to be for you. I can see a few like 20 cent piece circles there. I'm going to tell you right now, too small. I will show you my diagram in about 60 seconds, but that'll give you some opportunity to draw your own. Okay, off you go. Okay, now I'm just going to point out, right, I have a distinct advantage um, off of you because um, having drawn it on a tool like this, I can draw things like perfect circles and get all my scale perfectly right. Um, little things like, for example, um, have, a, have a look at how I've positioned everything, right? Have a look at that straight line, for instance, right? The line is 2, 1 plus lambda 1, 2. Can you see on my diagram all this orange stuff which enabled me to construct where it was? Right? Do you see the position vector? Uh, 2, 1. So I went 2, 1. Bam, that black point, I'm on the line now. Yeah? And then I look at the direction vector and then I say, ah, it's the next orange one, right? I go 1, 2. So this is me working out where does the line go, where does it face? Okay? Um, I can do that perfectly. I've actually have a, I used the grid behind this in order to do it properly. Um, and then I can say, well, now I'm going to think about this circle, right? Think about the circle and how I constructed it. Again, crucial information. Center, 1, negative 2. 
and then I've got a radius. Again, I have this distinct advantage that I can do it perfectly, which we're not going to expect you are able to do normally just with a, even if you've got a pair of compasses or something like that. But the important thing is, do you have positioned roughly what it is you're trying to find? You've got your P and your Q there, right? I put them in in blue. And what's the actual thing I'm after? M. It's M, right? That's, that's what I'm trying to locate. And so that's why you can see, hopefully, I've got that there. I'll be able to do a sense check afterwards when I get an answer for this, if I'm in the right ballpark, OK? Now, how do I go about this? Now, there's at least two distinct, pretty solid methods you could use. Um, you could think of this, because we've given you straight lines, circles, you could do this all in Cartesian terms, right? You could get a Cartesian equation for that circle. You could get a Cartesian equation for that line. Uh, it's not too difficult, for example, if you just look here. Oopsie daisy, sorry. If you just look here, um, it's not difficult to work out that that's the y-intercept of this, and you sort of already have the gradient in your mind. So you could do that, come up with Cartesian equations for everything, and off you go, OK? I've got the Cartesian solution for this. If we have time, I've got another example after this. We might have a look at it. But for now, the whole point of us looking at this question is to try and wrap our hand around how do we use vector equations to come up with this m. Okay? So hold on to your hats. Let's try and solve this together. The equation of a circle in vector terms is remarkably similar to the equation of a circle on the complex plane. Think about this with me. I wonder if you can think back to term four, right? If I asked you, for instance, let's keep it nice and simple, to tell me the complex plane equation of, say, the unit circle, just a nice basic one, what would its equation be? It's very, very simple. I'll give you a clue. It's got a z in it. <laughs> I'm helpful like that. Absolute z equals something. Okay, I'm going to have a modulus of z, right? Which it, it represents distance from the origin, okay? So distance from here. And in order to get all the points on the circumference, what do I want that distance to be? One. For the unit circle, it's just one, right? Now, it's not difficult to make this not the unit circle. All I have to do is make it, say, bigger or smaller. Just change that to whatever radius you want. So far, so good. That's exactly the same idea over here in vector equations, right? Z, we can think of, we even did this back in term four. We can think of Z in vector terms. Okay, so therefore, you might want to jot this down, right? The equation of a circle that is centered on the origin is going to look exactly the same as that, except instead of z, which is our notation for complex numbers, we would use the modulus or the absolute value of, well, whatever vector you want, right? The modulus of some vector is going to equal some particular radius. That's what I've got over there. Does that make sense? So here is a circle centered on the origin with some given radius. Okay? Now, think back to over here. Right? What if I didn't want a circle centered on the origin? What if I wanted to say, I don't know, move it one unit to the, let's go this way actually, one unit to the right. Okay? Suppose I wanted it over here, centered at one. What would I do to this equation? It won't be mod z anymore. Yeah, it'll be mod z again, again. Yeah, fantastic. Mod of z minus 1, and then whatever radius, right? Because what this does is it says, instead of looking from the origin, now I'm looking from 1, and then I compare that distance, OK? That's going to be exactly the same deal over here, except I've just got a slightly off center, right? So this particular circle, I'm going to have not just the distance to this vector, to the endpoint, but it's the distance offset by whatever your center is supposed to be, which in this case is 1 negative 2. Does that make sense? Do you see how, I mean, I didn't have to do minus 1. I could have done minus i or minus 1 plus 2i. I could go anywhere on the complex plane. And here, in the same way, I've just gone anywhere in these two dimensions, just offset by whatever you want your center to be. What's my radius in this question? It's 3. Bam. Uh, unlike the Cartesian equation, which has an r squared in it from Pythagoras, this is just r. I just want the distance. That's the distance. It's 3. Ta-da. Okay.